have used over the past two decades to speak about a situation or situations that have no real value being discussed in these types of forms. Know that I've not been given a dime to speak on this subject on Dogface's platform. While I can appreciate the curiosity of young adults of those persons who knew these two young men, Antonio Cadell Jr., a.k.a. Whiteball, and Darnell Lindsay, a.k.a. Blade Icewood, I cannot appreciate men who are grandfathers clout chasing and attempting to bring back a portion of their youth by assassinating someone else's character, specifically mine. My knowledge of the events which transpired in the early morning hours of September 18th 2004, continuing up to May 2005, have been promised to a person committed to doing an in-depth documentary on Wipeout and the Cheddar Boys for the purpose of setting the record straight. Even then, I would mention no one by name. Again, this is a favor to a friend, and I am receiving no monies. I can't offer the thirsty a drink, nor can I get a petty purpose, though I can clear up a few misconceptions. I've never worked for Wipeout in any capacity. I'm the big homie. I'm not a boy and never have been. When I rap, it requires a bag and a body to help. And while I know the little guy that is so often talked about, he and I bumped into each other a time or two. In fact, just saw him a little over two years ago. Like me, he didn't want to talk about the past, but we have not, nor will we ever be friends. White was is and will forever be family. As for Juan, Dewan Wren, we've spoken twice that I can, you know, recall. He appeared an ambitious entrepreneur, very focused. Maybe one day he and I can share some bullet points about life after incarceration to assist others. As for Darnell, shortly after White Bob was murdered, I had an occasion to meet the once in a lifetime generational talent, Mr. Blade Icewood, you know, every time my mama shared. In fact, I think I may have been one of the last persons to see him before he was paralyzed. Needless to say, both young men were victims of tragic violence. But because someone's granddaddy got in their feelings, they used in these senseless tragedies to bring up the past. Does anyone see how wrong this shit is? As for the reason the statement seemed to be necessary, Someone I called played a recording of a man accusing me of all manner of illegal shit. And a lot of these little lames in here, in prison, run around running their mouth, dick riding, you know, jumping on the coattail, or I should say the long tail of a rat, and don't know what the fuck they talking about. Anyway, they say his name is Jesse James. I was confused. The white bandit and bank robber of the 1800s? I thought he was dead. Then I was told of a not so famous Detroit rapper and asked, his governor name isn't James Shelfon Williams, is it? Because I got paperwork of a guy who came to prison in the late 2000s and claimed he and I were enemies. They had authorities place a separation order in my file which kept me up north for seven years. No, can't be the same guy. Because the brother I was hearing going through a profanity-laced gangster rant seemed like he was drowning water, crippling sticks, and killing concrete. He claimed to be waiting to do harm to me outside a car wash. <laughs> no self-respecting Detroit bad guy would ever go on social media and incriminate himself. If this guy from Iowa, no, they can't be one and the same because the guy on Facebook attacking another guy who was once supposed to be his man sounded like a broke bitch by definition standards, you know. A poor, weak, contemptible man. Him sounded jealous and hurt. Him as a horrible imitation of a man. This man, and I use the word loosely, does not know me and has never exchanged any words with me. I've never met Jesse James. No, not me. Me, a man who is without doubt a contradiction about that action. What JJ is doing is informing to any law enforcement personnel who follows him or any follower connected to him on social media. JJ, if you were truly cut like the image you project, we would have met by now. You would have made sure of it. We could have sat in or outside a bar and exchanged a hundred round shots of tequila. Or I could have introduced you to my 45-year-old girlfriend, Kimber, and let you dance the night away with her. 
but you seem angry. The type of guy who doesn't know a good time until you're hit in the head with it twice. But that mouth is smart, sending words from a distance like a sniper, hoping someone with a badge or three-letter credentials is listening. You know, they call that one tail, one conviction. If you were your mouth, I'd be dead and alive. You know, natural life and all. Either that or came twice already. Because, baby, you working that throat. But, you know, let niggas tell them. I'm old, washed up and wore out. I've been a victim. Don't believe the rumors. After each of the 31 times I've been shot, I have twice that number of bodies to my credit. That's not exactly true. It's like, you know, <laughs> JJ being a solid nigga, it's all cap. But my rap on my murder conviction is still listed as unknown black male. I ain't never told on nobody. I went to trial on my federal indictment for various charges. Never took a plea agreement 35, downward departures, or Rule 11. All men should account for their own misdeeds. If anyone would ask the streets who I am, I hope they would simply respond. One of the last stand-up guys of his era. But if you would have asked me, you know how niggas do. I'd probably cap a little and say, if I was in Hollywood, I'd be listed as an action thriller. If I played in the NBA, I'd be Steph Curry, you know, number one shooter. If I was a car, huh? Yeah, niggas, I'd be a challenger or a demon. And if I was out, men with loose tongues wouldn't be where they are right now. So here's some advice to those who like the cap and clout chase. Let's tie those tongues up. Remember, we are in the sunset of our lives and night is fast approaching. Our focus should be on taking care of our families while enjoying the time we are left on earth and not poking monsters as they lock cages. Because you never know. This cage might open and free me. Then what? Are you niggas built for deep conversation? I am. God is a comedian. And just for laughs, he or she might allow all of us to meet just one more time. You know, so we can dead any issues. Quick PSA, public service announcement. Hope niggas who chase real niggas are like dogs chasing cars. They don't know what to do when they catch them. Not at all. They don't know what to do. So, keep my name out your mouth. I'm going to stay silent. I'm going to mind my own business. I'm going to do this bit. Please, try not to wake me up again.